Sharada from Edu TV. Today we have Ms. Chandrasekhar with us, Mrs. Sharada Chandrasekhar. She is the director of Whitefield Global School, Whitefields, Bangalore, India. Ma'am, as after roughly three decades, a new education policy has come, and I think it's quite exciting. New things are there. A lot of international uh, things are there. So, what uh, what is your view on the scene? How we will uh, like how we will excel? in the coming 10 years through this policy uh, first thing is that a long awaited change has come okay and it, it is one of the most amazing policies provided everybody follows it to the word and spirit of it without changing it number one the problem is that if the implementers do not implement it properly it will not work well so everybody must be trained all the all the stakeholders must be trained well all the stakeholders must be told about the benefit of this then we will have to implement it if we implement it 10 years down the lane we are going to do excellently well first thing is the complete conversion change has come from content to competencies which is the required the need of the r number 1 number 2 is that it is no more the marks it is more of uh, the learning outcomes the skills the attitudes which matter a lot the next thing which we we can be very proud is we got back those that credit systems which enables the child uh, of if uh, to gather as many credits as possible so that in that particular subject where the child loves the child has more and more uh, certificate and more and more learning and more and more additions happening and otherwise the child will be in child appropriate this is this is a typical international way of learning and this enables the whole lot of children to excel in the field which they like most and the best part of it is that choosing the minor major subjects from ninth standard is one of the most amazing things to happen and for all these things if it is implemented well with all the trainings and all the insights given to all the stakeholders it's going to do a do wonders thank you so much arda ma'am i'm sure uh, i'm even we are very much excited and i'm sure the way you have forecasted things should work that way and as india is a knowledge based economy so i think we will do definitely well through this nep thank you ma'am Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Hi, this is Pranav Guha Thakurta from Edu TV. Today we have got a very distinguished guest with us, Mrs. Avasti, Mrs. Alka Avasti. She is the principal of Mayur School, Nord Express Highway, and she has done pretty well. And uh, ma'am, as this policy has come after roughly three decades. and what i feel is a wonderful thing lot of new things have come lot of stand, uh, international things have come ma'am so in the school education and so what are your views how to impact the education system in our country in the coming 10 years the um, uh, mr prana thank you so much uh, for having me over uh, in uh, your platform um where and i see you coming up with uh, all these um, uh, things related to education uh, i guess uh, you are very uh, uh, very much you know frequently seen helping us out whatever new latest comes in the field so edu tv is always there uh, the, a pioneer to get into the system and um, this nap definitely i guess nahi nee, i'm pretty sure this nap 2020 is definitely going to bring a change in the education scenario and let me put it i uh, read it somewhere and when i was also going through this uh, nap uh, national education policy school education when i was going through it i uh, uh, i came to the conclusion that nep 2020 is based on flexibility for learners to choose um when how where and uh, uh you know what in life they wish to learn as per their interest and there is no separation between arts and sciences vocational and academics 
uh, curricular and extracurricular activities. And, uh, you know, one thing that struck me the most is the emphasis that is laid on ethics, conceptual understanding, life skills, and respect. Lost connection with uh, uh, Alka, man. Now we have uh, the famous economist and vice chancellor of Rishud University, Professor Kamlesh Mishra. Sir, we would like to have your views how to impact both schools and higher education in the coming 10 years. Well, uh, Pranav, I, I think a uh, uh, lot of changes will happen, but uh, you know, we have to remember that uh, how good a policy is going to be dependent on how effectively we can implement it. Uh, now, when it, is, when it is something new, then it's easier to implement. When you have to change something to implement something new, it becomes even more difficult. Uh, so we, we are in a given state uh, uh, in education, and we cannot uh, have a system of switch it on and switch it off tomorrow that, okay, let's switch off everything that was there and we start afresh tomorrow. It doesn't happen that way. So it, it will get staggered over a period of time. Some things will, it will be possible to start in the next one year, one and a half years. Some things will take five years. Uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, I'll give you an example that uh, uh, the policy says that there is no single law or a single discipline. We just said that, uh, you know, uh, what, what will happen is that the choices are much uh, bigger now. That a, a student who is a science student, we can't tell him that you are not a science student. But that science student will have... Yes, sir. Okay, what I'm saying is that uh, the, those compartments of art, science, and commerce uh, will not be there in the format it used to be there. But a student who is doing science will do his uh, science courses. But at the same time, he will have the flexibility to take a course in economics or take a course in history or take a course in accounting, which is possible, which was not possible before. So we, are not, we, we will not have the same kind of silos that we had before. Uh, now there, are, there is more uh, choice that is available. And I think that's the good part that, you know, uh, students must have choices, whether it is at the school level or it is at the, at the college level. So there is going to be a major transformation as far as the ability to choose what you want to study is going to be there, and which is good. Uh, and I'm sure that schools will also like it. It's not that they, 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 they will not like those kind of So these are some of the good things from the, the policy. But yes, we, we still see, always remember that the devil is in the details. It's when the implementation begins to happen. That's when we realize that, well, well, this is not as easy as we had thought, right? Because I always feel that uh, bringing about a policy change is very, very easy. But bringing about a change in the mindset is very, very difficult. Correct. You know, it is uh, all of us, the principals, the administrators, the deans, are the people whose mindsets will have to change. We are used to a different kind of a system, right? It is going to take some time for us to change that thinking. Reforms are about change in mindset, not on just the procedures. The procedures can change, but our mindset is still the same. Nothing is going to happen. So I think the onus of implementation is now going to fall onto the institutions. I think schools need to implement, principals need to implement, we as vice chancellors need to implement, because it is giving a lot of flexibility for institutions to reorganize itself in a way that there is compliance with the uh, with the policy. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Before I come to Geeta, ma'am, I request Roop, uh, Madam Rupa Chakravarti, as she's already running international course and CBSC course in her school. And ma'am, this new policy is quite like following Western examples. Now, what is your view? How will it impact the whole country in coming 10 years as India is, will be a, a knowledge-based economy? Uh, thank you, Pranav. Um, uh, I think some of the points that uh, Alka and Professor Mishra put forward uh, earlier are very, very relevant and profound. Uh, you know, we have challenges uh, and that is what makes life interesting. But overcoming them is what is going to make it meaningful. 
Correct. And that is where uh, we need to take the words of Professor Mishra when he says that we have to implement it in the ethos that it was meant to be, uh, you know, it was put forth. Uh, so having seen the different boards, I believe that there are a lot of similarities which are coming in, like there's a checkpoint, like in the Cambridge University, you have checkpoints, so you have the 533, so there are checkpoints in uh, after certain classes in the middle school, after fifth, after eighth, that would uh, be adhered to according to this policy. There is a multidisciplinary, there's an interdisciplinary slash cross-curricular uh, approach to learning where you are given the choice of having the subjects uh, from grade six, you know, which kind of uh, is mollifying for children who are very scared of certain subjects. So I think these are certain parallels which we can draw with the foreign boards, uh, which are very helpful. So I'll just leave it at this and have uh, wait for Geeta to speak. Yeah, uh, Geeta, man, as you had, you have got so much of experience. You're seeing, you've seen the transformation in Indian education. So how this policy will help us, man? A few changes were much awaited like the combination of grades one and two with the kindergarten because um, this was a very anxious transition from kg to one so we in our schools used to combine you know one and two with the pre-primary so that the transition is smooth so these uh, you know years that they have clubbed five three three and four it is very good it actually takes care of the different age needs. And of course, as Rupa said, the checkpoints at grade three, five and eight would be very, very helpful. So instead of just opening up to what my standard is after the 10th boards, you know, the child would know right from the beginning where I am. And uh, certainly a lot depends on how we are conducting uh, these, uh, you know, assessments or evaluations at these levels. Interestingly, a lot of people say that now there'll be more choice of subjects for students. Definitely there would be. But even in the existing, uh, you know, scenario for 11 and 12, we do not have a restriction by CBSC. CBSC says you take English plus any other four subjects or five subjects or six subjects that you want. CBSC doesn't say that, uh, you know, you have to take the PCB stream or the commerce stream. It is us, it is the parents and the schools who have made these streams. And I, I had students who wanted to go for defense and they took with commerce subjects, they took physics because that was an eligibility condition. Now, it is more important for us to see whether higher education facilitates this flexibility of subjects at school level. So we may have a child taking up accounts and uh, psycho and maybe, you know, uh, physics with that. But what is the scope for him to study any of these subjects at higher education level? So are the colleges going to allow that, okay, if you had physics, we'll allow you to pursue some science course and you can always take some additional, you know, subjects or credits to clear some of the basics, you know, which were maybe required at plus two level. So we need the same flexibility to come up at higher education. One point which I really loved in the new education policy is the internship. They have introduced in grade six, seven, eight, Beautiful, much needed. And this will not only bring in a lot of development of skills, which are, according to me, life skills. Okay, not only breathing and computing. You need to know basic plumbing and electrical, you know, things at home. And it will also bring in a lot of dignity of labor, which is a mess in our system. So, Great. thank you. A lot more. Let's hear the others also. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, I'm there. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Dr. Mehta is the director of Sarvatam International School, Noida. Dr. Mehta, like in the in new education policy, I, I think uh, it is there. First, uh, till class fifth, they will, uh, I think, study in their mother tongue or I think two languages will study. How it will affect the system, ma'am? As we have already, we have an example, Sadar Patel School in Delhi. They don't teach English till class fifth and they're doing pretty well. 
Yeah. I think uh, the entire concept of this uh, language that has been used, there are certain words that are being missed out, uh, uh, being understood in that paragraph. And I'd like to highlight that. Very good you asked me this, because this topic is very close to my heart, uh, actually. Um, we have always been teaching children in a mixed bilingual way, as far as primary classes were concerned, because our mother tongue happens to be the local tongue or Hindi or the state language, whatever it is. So we, it's always empowering for a teacher to bring around concepts to children in, uh, in a bilingual uh, you know, uh, language uh, formula. So there's nothing actual, there's, we're not departing from what we've been already doing, that's one. Secondly, it very clearly says wherever possible. I think we're missing on that word, which is very important. Um, there's no compulsion on doing a particular teaching in a particular manner and what I understood and that's totally what based on my understanding of the text that we are free to take up a combination of whatever suits our children. Now, the entire concept of giving freedom to the child to learn the way the child wants to learn is the focus behind this entire idea is what I feel and it's beautiful. Uh, yes, Sadar Patel is a huge example where children have been learning in their mother tongue and they have nothing to lose. And uh, I guess we need to exercise a little more, uh, uh, you know, uh, openness towards using local languages. There are, you know, when a policy comes in, it takes uh, a pan India view. So there are regions in the country where such a, you know, some kind of a uniformity in curriculum, some kind of a, a uniformity or baseline on uh, minimum levels of learning is required. And I guess that will be greatly, greatly, um, you know, uh, strengthened by this kind of, because now it's on paper and in black and white. So people will start thinking of it. You know, we, we are kind of a community where people really don't think till it comes to us on paper or is defined by higher education and we start thinking, uh, higher authorities and we start thinking about it. So I think uh, largely most of the schools are already uh, taking this, um, uh, they're working on this, uh, they uh, and you, you know they kind of incorporate both the languages, whether it is uh, a mother tongue or a state language. And not only is that, but let me tell you, I have been watching uh, schools in the south very closely. And interestingly, most of the schools in south also start their primary classes with the local language, and they feel it's really, really the learning is faster and it's long term. So there isn't any harm in it. At the same time, I don't think we should be targeting English uh, specifically. The document is very clear that it encourages uh, multiple language expertise. So there is no way that is mentioned that one language can be uh, given, a, you know, um, a preference over the other language. Yes, let's let's wait to see what the guidelines come in. It's too early, I think, to uh, predict what actually uh, the pre-primary or the ECCE curriculum is going to look like. I think it's a little early for us to find, uh, you know, to actually define that the lines mean this. We Let's wait down uh, for the final, uh, you know, uh, execution is very important. And I totally agree with everybody here that I, it's a beautiful document and it's very progressive, something that we, we've been waiting for a long uh, time now. But if it is not executed in the same manner it's written, it will, it will be a huge loss. So let's hope uh, and empower the document from the fact that we should execute in the, it in the same sense that uh, it comes to us. But I'm still waiting and hoping the, uh, the you know, the, the guidelines don't take too long. Usually it takes uh, more than months, but I hope that, uh, and I'm positive that uh, with the kind of, you know, uh, the, the enthusiasm that the, the authorities are showing, I'm sure the guidelines will come in early and we'll be able to understand it more clear. So let's not be like, like those blind men around the elephant trying to find out what is what. And I think we need to be more uh, precise and because whatever we are saying and discussing right now is the way people are going to understand it. So we should be careful. Thank you. I would request Mr. Dheeraj Arya, Principal Transland School, Mawana. Sir, as to your school is in a more of a rural belt, if I'm not mistaken. So how yeah. does this uh, policy will impact the schools in the rural area of India? So definitely, uh, Mr. Pranav, first of all, thank you for inviting me. And definitely it will be a big, big helpful for the students of the rural area uh, because they are under pressure of the English language also. Sometimes the purpose of the teaching defeats when they become, they become under the pressure of the language. 
so Correct. when it will be removed the so understanding of the subjects will be more easier for them so it in this way it will be helping a lot and dropouts definitely dropouts will be reduced by this policy uh, in rural areas especially they face up financial problems and different family problems even sometimes they used to drop that after first year or second year of the degree level so now it will be help this new policy will be helping a lot them uh, to continue their studies at higher level especially now I'd request mr trilok singh best who is a uh, principal of dpsg sir how do you think like this uh, i think the this nep has added lot of many things like ai machine learning design thinking so how it will help <coughs> students and how how the teachers will be trained for that first of all i derive from greetings to all my friends i can see a lot of familiar faces thank you pranav for connecting us time and again okay. actually we are able to meet everyone so this is also a part of our uh, you know when we talk about ai and when we talk about the machine learning this is also part of machine learning only where we are meeting everyone virtually and i think in the times to come virtual learning will be integrated in the education system and i think whatever the government has done this time is a welcome move all together what i believe is you know we when i was in jammu i had adopted three government schools now with the new policy coming in i have already written to the hrd ministry that we are ready to take uh, take charge of the adult education and when we talk about adult education we will be doing after school hours so that the people adults who are working and want to educate themselves further they can be we can have an adult education center dpsg vasundhara and when we talk about the ai and machine learning it is the future actually if you really look at it uh, when we were doing after class 10 after 12 we go for colleges we talk about the liberal arts but now from 9th onwards we have the liberal uh, system of taking and accepting the subjects ai can be one of the subjects which can be a mainstream subject for a student one can choose whatever one wants uh, like geeta ma'am said choice could be a science student taking psychology or taking political science which was already allowed in our system i had two of my students who cleared their um, uh, is last year they were science students with political science as a subject with them and they've done so well in their life they were having environmental studies and all after 12th class they did and today they are is officers what i believe is all the subjects are available 9 to 12 as uh, earlier it was said pre prime was only for the public schools like us like priyanka ma'am was saying that uh, language should not be a barrier i believe it depends on the culture of the school if my school has english medium culture in the uh, letter and spirit i find my children understand english so very well they understand english better than their local language also there should be no barrier of language let the schools choose let the schools uh, connect with the children both ways you know they can make it a multicultural atmosphere in the school where the children when they are not able to understand a little bit of hindi a little bit of punjabi whatever could be added on but if the school's culture is of english or of marathi or of punjabi let them continue with what they are doing and uh, as far as uh, the ai is there that has to be started from class 6 for the understanding because what we are doing is we started with class 9th initially but now it has come to 8th also as per cpsc i think it should start from the childhood only i'm telling you i have a pre primary child that is kg child we had a class assembly today of kg students and i could see the children have made one or two slides starting from one slide making one slide and showing in front of everyone and speaking it out i think that confidence building is needed i think now the learning outcomes have to be measured in a different way like right. the learning outcomes like uh, grades and marks only learning outcome has to be the students profile has to be taken into account as the ib system was doing the ci i had the experience of international schools as well so what i feel is now cbsc has taken the amalgamation of all we have taken good points from everywhere but the biggest challenge lies on what is the implication what how we are going to implement it 
implementation is going to be a challenge because cc system in 2009 when it started was also a beautiful system but it started without any pilot project suddenly it was imposed on the people without any understanding i hope this time the things will be implemented in a better way in a very phased manner made the people understand you know first of all it should be in a very phased manner altogether so that understanding reaches out to the interiors and the uh, rural areas you know in delhi and ncr everybody gets to know the things better but when we talk about the interiors we talk about the rural areas they are the ones who should be given equal importance they should be put at equals so that things can be percolated down to everyone thank you thank you pranav thank thank you rupa ma'am how important will be the teachers training and what kind of challenges we have like for i know you have you have always advocated from last 10 years that there should be a internship and you do or an internship for your students also so how the teachers can be trained ma'am as per industry uh, pranav thank you for asking me that i remember making this presentation at i am bangalore uh where uh, we had the infosys chairman sitting in the crowd and uh, okay. i asked him uh, mr narayan murthy i asked him i said uh, erstwhile chairman sorry and i asked him i said sir why is it that china has advanced because of the program that they run in the schools ensuring that there is a seamless uh, you know uh, movement in learning between industry and Uh, tertiary and school so he was uh, very uh, you know enthused by the thought that we in our school are doing apprenticeship which is what we start from grade 9 and we have tied up with industries we have people come in and give them talks but more than that they have the summer apprenticeship so this vocational part that they have introduced is something which is very very close to my heart my son went in for his internship when he was in stephens and uh, that i felt it was too late and he went to ey to do his internship and i felt it was too late for him you know and that is why when i had the power i thought i should start it in school and so for the last 7 8 years we are doing it and the kind of learning that happens for the child when he goes through those two or three years of what we call the apprenticeship is fantastic so i love the vocational part which has come into this new thing and of course like everybody is saying it's about the implementation the teachers mm. need yeah. to begin with the thought of change and we know that change is a constant that we all have to adapt luckily as in comparison to 2009 when cc happened and there weren't very many trainings happen, happening at that point of time there's been a transition in the 11 years where now training has become the moot point for any kind of learning and the beginning is with beginning is with the epistemology that we are looking at the methods the validity the scope of learning you know so the pedagogy the pedagogy is being addressed today through these trainings and i think now slowly even in the interiors because there is also a catch over here about rural and urban if you read uh, between the fine print there is a catch between rural and urban and they are wanting to do things in a particular way in the rural areas and in a particular way in the urban areas to ensure that there is equity i think alka had used the word equity initially so i think that is something which is again very very heartening and the teachers have started changing but i think a little more change is required and where will change come from we change as heads and we think we need to do this there is no way it cannot be done when we say we want the marks we get the marks when we say we want the children to do well in a co curricular in sports we get it done so we have to be the change that we wish to see in the world i think uh, i would say that and especially with the teachers talk yes ma'am yes. ma'am how will this uh, nep impact the school education in the coming 10 years see uh, i said uh, the impact i have also been uh, hearing uh, rupa ma'am of course geeta vashni ma'am and uh, and priyanka too so see this definitely will impact uh, have a long lasting impact and impact for the better 
Um, like uh, I said, there are uh, this entry and exit that is going to, I'm not talking about school now, I'm talking about college. The credit system that they've started, the internship that they've started in the middle school, in uh, middle school, uh, in our schools, and also the choice of subjects that they have uh, given to uh, the students. And like I said, uh, Mr. Pranav, the best part is the assessment also is going to change, is undergoing changes, right. and it is going to change for good. Because that rote learning, that uh, memorization that we all uh, initially and used to focus, you know, maybe a few years ago, will definitely come to an end. It will be more on the understanding of the core competencies rather than uh, memorizing or uh, learning it uh, by heart or, or, uh, or uh, and our uh, style of teaching that uh, used to be, um, you know, a traditional style earlier will, is, ch has changed due because of the online education and will continue changing in the future as well. And uh, like I said, Mr. Pranav, uh, uh, from other um, boards also, this definitely is a good step. Like there are so many things that has been taken from the IB, from other, uh, the, the good points, because I remember last year when I met chairperson CBSC. So we were part of uh, the experiential learning project, the handbook that we came up with, came out with. So then also the chairperson was very clear that we got to evolve our education system and especially CBSC. So we've taken uh, good points from everywhere and this is definitely going to help uh, us uh, in CBSC schools. Well, like Priyanka said, I am still waiting for everything to come in letter and spirit. Uh, no, and for us also to, you, to start uh, using it in letter and spirit and everything to come to us in details because this uh, particular aspect of Hindi being uh, used or your local language or regional language being used as a medium of instruction, definitely a few of my parents, uh, when they read it in the newspaper or they heard it in the, on uh, television, uh, they started calling me up. They said, I hope the medium of instruction will not be uh, the regional or the local language. Local language for us is Hindi. So I told them, I said, no, you just wait. It is not going to happen completely in Hindi. And whatever, finally, it takes uh, the shape, you know, and it comes to us, we will come to know. Let's not be, uh, let's not start coming to uh, hasty decisions or conclusions. So I would just say, let's wait and watch, but it is definitely going to help my uh, children in CBSC, our children in CBSC. Great, great. Yes. Professor Mishra. I want to make one, one uh, uh, comment on this language thing, uh, because I think there's a, uh, uh, there is a concern. Uh, I, I personally believe in a free market system, so I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not a person who believes in too much of regulation. Uh, I believe that if the markets are allowed to function efficiently, uh, you, you do uh, uh, reach an equilibrium point. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think uh, uh, government must provide choices to people. Uh, government must not impose things. Uh, so whenever we say that uh, you know uh, it should be in this language or that language, that's a that's a compulsion. I think uh, the what is the objective of the government? If they want to promote regional languages, they need to spend on schools, setting up schools and colleges in regional languages. But allow people. Uh, let's let's assume today. Uh, uh, let's say that Sardar Patel. Everybody says that they have till class five. They have in uh, Hindi medium. So the whole of Delhi should be going to Sardar Patel. If, uh, if it is uh, uh, so good that everybody loves to study in Hindi medium, 
then there should have been about 30, 40 of such schools uh, in Delhi itself. It is not there, right? Then it's not Patel. Because there is a limited number of people who want to go to that kind of a place. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong in it. I'm 100% supporting if people want to study. I, I studied in the South. My schooling was in South India, in Mysore. And we, we went through a three language formula. So I still speak Canada. Even today I speak Canada. Right? Because I studied till, till class 12. So there, 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 there is no harm. Let people decide where they want to send their child. They want to send them in an English medium, that should be available. If I want to send a child in a Tamil uh, medium school, I should have a choice. Right? That's, that's the function of the government to make available certain set of choices and let the market decide. Right? If everybody wants to go to a Hindi medium school, who is going to open English medium schools? Nobody. People are opening English medium schools because there, are, there is a demand for it. Right? So uh, if, we, if we interfere into the smooth functioning of the market, it creates distortions. And those distortions are going to be very, very harmful. Right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. If somebody wants to study in Sanskrit, they should be allowed to study Sanskrit. It's the good job of the government to do it. Don't force it onto the private schools. It is not the responsibility of the private schools. It is the responsibility of the government. And they need to fund it, and they need to set up those schools and institutions in regional languages. But, but I, I have a major problem because uh, I'm a government, let's say I'm a government servant. I, I'm transferred to Tamil Nadu. I take my kid from class one who's studying in Hindi medium. Now he has to go and study in Tamil. I'm driving that small kid crazy. You know, how, how can we do that? So yes, it should be such that if I'm studying, my child is studying in Hindi medium in Delhi and I get transferred to Tamil Nadu, then I should have a choice of a school which is run in Hindi medium. Then, then it's fine, right? But if you are going to force me, if I have it uh, as a government employee or a, a company employee, I may be transferred three times in a year, or an army person, I'm transferred three times. And if you don't know how many languages are wrong. So I think that we, we need to be more realistic about some of these things. Uh, uh, I think giving choice is good, promoting languages is good. I think every state must promote their language. I'm all for it. But please, in your promotion, don't, don't make fix the guinea pigs. You know, it's, uh, I, I don't agree with that, that policy. Choice must be there. Correct, correct. Thank you, thank you, sir. Either I'm just coming to you. We have Dr. Rajiv Khan from Indian School Maskar. Uh, I think it's the second largest CBSC school uh, in the world. Sir, how this policy will impact uh, overseas CBSC schools or overseas Indian schools? Thank you, Pranav. Uh, first of all, let me thank you all for making and making us all meet, like Thilok said. Nowadays, we meet virtually. Correct. Sir, let me first thank the government. They understood the demand of the society and we are moving to that direction. It's a beautiful document. But there are certain question marks on that. I'll come to those question marks one by one. Let's talk the positive things of it. Number one, the internship project. Excellent one. Like Rupa Ma'am said, the internship, why the people of a particular segment are too good, whereas the others are not. It's only the internship. Let's be honest, when we were all students, we were not exposed to all these things. The day we became teachers and started teaching, our confidence came up. The first, let's remember all of us sitting as educationists, the first day when we went to class, many of us had the shaking legs. We were scared. But today you ask us to speak 10,000 people, we will do it, no issue. One shot, five minutes notice, we can do that. It's because we got trained in it. The internship project, an excellent one. I'm really, really for it. Secondly, like, the looks have rightly said, the CCE thing. We should not uh, get really uh, unfortunate. The CCE, when it was understood in the interiors, Delhi and NCR, they will all get chances. No problem. 
the moment you reach interior and they understood it was pulled down so that is should not be there should be proper as rightly said a phased manner done do and there should be no political agendas in it let us all grow about politics i'll give you this four year program which is put in the nep you all agree uh, if you had it came in delhi university it was it was implemented in delhi university my daughter was one of them and when i saw the four year curriculum i i was for it it is exactly same child should have multiple expertise my daughter was from science background she opted for psychology because she had a passion for it but she was asked to do financial marketing she was sorry financial maths marketing and the uh, communication skills the subjects were given so that anywhere she goes she understand that same thing has come up this is what we want up because today we if you go down in some time certain jobs will vanish we have to keep our child so that it will be very well this policy is in the vision of it i am only scared of it should not become a political move and some people takes flags and make tamasha and take it down let's all grow up because if you want to make a country better progress the system has to be strong which is implement but the problem in this is going to come is how are we going to implement in a vast area like india it's a i don't know how they're going to do it i will read the document it's too early to comment on it too early to how we are going to do it. but yes in our domain we i i am trying that suppose everything goes well 2021 we are doing a backward homework it's the phase 1 we did have a meeting uh, yesterday with our team the good thing is i happened to speak some people high officials in the ministry they are very impressed in power i was talking to them for something and he asked that how would you do this in your country i said sir there are challenges but people they are competent enough to do that he said sir just ensure that if they are here they are also equipped for it keeping that in mind on the background we need sort of approvals in ministry of we are working on it but an excellent document and best practices taken up and like rightly said by uh, professor mr let's not uh, impose on to them sir had only one problem from delhi to chennai i have a problem from this part of world every state or any district in name it with 10000 people students any district in name it i have a child from that district and this part of world is very world wide any time you can lose job anything you need and child studying here in a particular medium say i i start with english or hindi or malayalam or whatever i say that he goes back to a bihar will he not get the medium then i have been damaged so that is a one very serious challenge but i'm sure india is known for one this and we can do that and we will look forward to it but it will take some time as rightly pointed out with all of many of us it's a challenge how we do it making document is not so tedious but implementing is really really tedious. but covid also gave an opportunity to us this virtual training can actually make the people go this is what we missed in the time of cc cc when it was implemented i was also part of it when started when the joshi sir was there it went very well but by the time it reached the interior i was in the interiors i was posted in uh, the uh, kanpur and uh, the bihar uh, zone and unfortunately it was pulled off so the teacher used to say sir abhi to sikha tha jo samajh mein aaya tha kya ye nahi hona chahiye my only thing is whatever we do it do in a phase manner let's implement it it's a beautiful document which all of the education senior will like read it and we are looking for this so this only i would say and thank you very much and thanks to all of you wonderful meeting you all and i would say thanks for it thank you जोहान Lose out on the veracity that we have of these languages, the literature that we have, the knowledge that we have in these languages. It is not so much the debate for medium. We, as educationists, should not forget that 
the early years are the best time to learn any language and our children suffer when they are taught the second language or the third language other than the mother tongue because the way it is taught to learn a language you have to listen to the language before you speak and you have to read the language before you write but in our system if you see most of the schools also start teaching english start writing a b c d then they teach the phonetics and they so you see it is something very very natural for a child you speak in any language he will pick up so the debate is not there but another thing which i want everyone to understand is that there is a demand for a lot of foreign language studies in our school. you know when the parents have to choose the third language from grade 5 in the school in some schools they start from grade 4 also and they often ask me ma'am tell us uh, the scope of french or mandarin these days is so much in demand half the world is going to trade with china so what should our child take up and then you see that is the point when they should value the language the the you know the strength of the language itself also and i in this forum i would like to share uh, prana that you know sanskrit is a language which i can't speak some i have to sit straight i have to have my spine straight if i have to speak sanskrit because it creates so much of energy in my system so if you look at the strength of a language and want to learn a language it's different if you want to see the commercial value and learn a language it's different so you see the choices of the parents that and the ch children what they want to learn so the language thing is much wider you know in scope it is not just a political thing that's it that's what i want great great thank you we, we also have with us mr jyotishman datta who is a managing trustee of Assam Downtown University, sir, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm there. Sorry, I joined in little late. I was caught up in something. No, no problem, uh, Mr. Datta. We just wanted to know, like uh, this NEP 2020, how it will impact the higher education in India in coming ten years. I think uh, your eminent, most of the eminent panelists have already covered the points. As a document, there is nothing in principle wrong with it. It's what it should ideally be. I think we all agree with that. There are problems. There is no document in India that, as a, con a country as diverse and large as India, there will not be clashes. There will be clashes. Obviously, there are issues. When it comes to, I think the biggest uh, thorn for many people has been the language issue, which I think we've also been covering it for the last five to ten minutes. But uh, in states which are non-Hindi speaking, like say Bengal, Assam, Orissa, we have been trilingual for years and years and years. So it is naturally a trilingual state. So there, the uh, application of it is little different. And no matter how much we say it is very political, so we would wish to remove politics from our everyday life, but that's next to impossible. So one of the huge political resonance is there that now Assam is is compulsory in Assam, which has been a practically almost a riot issue for the last two to three years. So I believe those issues are also there in the other hill states and even southern states. In higher education, yes, there will be a lot of flexibility. The fact that students, a lot of students have to discontinue education because of whatever reason. Now at least they'll move with some credits, they'll move with some certificates, which they can continue later on. That is, I believe, a brilliant and uh, meaning it's going to be life changing for a lot of students. Dropouts are there because it's impossible to predict what happens in three to four years. So now students will not go empty handed. I think this is one of the best things that can happen to students and even institutes because the student can even come back later on and he doesn't have to start from zero. But one issue is there regarding the enhancement of the curriculum and being a four year curriculum, which is OK. But one thing we have to be very sure now today, a student is studying for three years. He's spending, say, 100 rupees on that. He's getting X education and he's getting also placement based on it. If you change the curriculum and maybe make it longer, maybe some there's talk of it becoming four years, like most professional programs, it will increase the cost of education as well. So students also have to get something out of it. That is something I think will be the biggest challenge for the universities to adapt this new system and give value to the student. I understand it's going to be a learning process. It's going to be a huge change for all universities that we also have to adapt. But if we are able to give value, it would be welcome. Otherwise, in for the short term at least, there would be some kind of a, I can understand from the student point of view because I'm spending more time now, I'm learning more things, but the end of the day, what am I getting out of it? There's a long term value in terms of knowledge and a short term value they get in terms of placements. 
but the placement is what always students would see initially because even now in india for 90 95% that large sum they spend on education is a huge investment and for that placement linked uh, returning the money to the parents or whoever they borrow it from or even the bank is essential so this is a linkage that we also have to figure out even obviously we not figured out all of this today in principle brilliant we need to start it will give a lot of flexibility which we i think we've always been complaining for the last many many years all administrators students educators which would give it a lot of flexibility we can only hope for the best and proceed but uh, being in india i don't think we can take politics out from anything i'm sure there would be their own resonance which has already started in states like assam and uh, just because of covid things are little under the lid but this will blow up i don't i hope it doesn't but things are already starting so delhi is a different ball game but when you come to the larger non hindi speaking well the east the west and the south the politics of it the logic of it is entirely different which i hope it doesn't get too much or whatever doesn't get too much of chaos but already the issues have started the embers are already rising here so let's hope for the best that's all we can say great 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 uh, uh, rupa ma'am as like in uh, geeta ma'am just said that uh, because of the vocational training the students can you know uh, do the repairing at home or some this vocational studies is not targeting for them uh, taking a career also yes there are so many i think uh, some of the changes that's taken place in the tertiary education is the vocational learning we cannot forget the triple it the you know the some of the other uh, institutions which have come up which lay a lot of stress on vocational learning so i would say that this is something which personally i am really really very happy with because like they say that a mechanic knows mechanical engineering better than a mechanical engineer Correct. i think that is something that will be mitigated now or that you know that area that we have of big question mark whether an engineer is actually an engineer uh, is something will be mitigated whether you can make a rolls royce engine for that huge aircraft that's going to take off you know or do you need to depend on somebody else to do that for you you know so again the three words that i really lay stress on method validity and scope and that pedagogy you know which these three words should be kind of uh, you know highlighted the scope that what is what is coming through the vocational learn the method the validity and the scope so we need to focus on this to ensure that there is a seamless transition between knowledge and application and the skill is what is embedded in the middle you know and that is what this vocational training or the vocational bit is going to do and i'm glad that it's starting young so correct correct dr priyanka you're there yes i'm there pranav yeah yeah i think dr priyanka i think you're very excited about the nep from uh, yeah so you heard everyone you heard uh, professor kamlesh mishra rupa chakravarti ma'am mm -hmm. uh, dr rajiv chauhan Gita Vasne, ma'am, your neighbor, Trilokshin Bisji, why, Mr. Jyotish Pandatta, and Alka, can you conclude the discussion, ma'am? You are asking me to do your job, fine. Yes. <laughs> out, out, outsourcing. It was, it was extreme. I think the entire discussion has been able to, uh, you know, move around a lot of uh, points, and we've largely interestingly covered everything that was there. So right from the fact that we understand and we are happy about the Priyanka, Priyanka, can can I come in before you conclude? There was one very important point we were missing on please, this, throughout please, the discussion. Please, please. Throughout the discussion, we didn't talk about the teachers. They were talking about the national professional development of the teachers. Is it going to be like the? Licenses for two years for a teacher, and they have to renew the licenses. They have to get themselves updated. What about the CBTs? Nothing is clear at the moment, and we don't want the teachers. If we want to implement this, we need to change the mindset of the teachers and right. the principals. Nothing can change till the time we don't change our mindset. So for right. that, the national professional development of teachers. What is the basic about it? How we are going to go about it? Are we going about the license? 
process like in Australia and UK and US, the teachers get the license for two years, then they have to renew, they have to prove their work, they have to say they're updated. Good. They are getting the things, uh, uh, you know, a bang on time. It's not that the 30 years back what I was teaching in economics, I'm continuing with the same pattern today. Then it's not going to work. So this is very important part of our NEP, where they talk about the national professional standard of the teachers. So but let's see, uh, I think we need to talk on this also. Yeah, uh, Rupa did touch that uh, briefly. Um, uh, so I think that's very important because, you know, yeah. if, if the teachers and the schools don't get prepared, I don't think the mm -hmm. execution is ever possible. So we have to have the force in place and empowered and confident about whatever changes uh, we are going to do. So I was just trying to put all the points together. We started with a beautiful thing that Alka uh, brought in by saying that the policy aims at uh, equity, uh, basically, freedom of the learner. And I think that's what we've been waiting for a very long time. Uh, it talks about uh, multiple uh, things that will come in. It is affecting, I think there's a revolution uh, that is going to happen in the ECC that was much awaited. Uh, the formalization of the pre primary classes, that's very important. And uh, first, uh, the higher education. And very rightly said by Sir, um, uh, that, uh, you know, it, it has to be, the blend has to uh, come in from, uh, right from the lowermost class till the higher education. If you understand how that would come in, how that would be executed in principle, uh, it, it's still going to be the timelines, uh, I, I think the timelines are suggested and they are very clear on how we are going. I hope we are not rushing with the implementation, but there isn't a delay over an unnecessary delay over it. So we are all understanding that. A uh, huge uh, uh, impact on um, the way teachers are going to be handling the classes, the way curriculum is going to be Great steps uh, in vocationals, great steps in the way uh, class 11 and 2 uh, will happen. And one thing I think we did miss out was inclusivity has been given a fair uh, position in the entire document wherein we are talking of children coming in and how we are going to be, uh, you know, creating learning spaces for these children. And uh, 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 that's, that's really nice. It's, it's nice that for the first time, the inclusive policy has been included in the main national policy. So that's great as a, and it's a very welcome change. A lot more, I think, we'll rediscover. Discover. It's a huge document. I don't think we should go by that 60-page summary of it. But okay. yes, the document in itself is a huge document and it'll take some time for us to completely decode and decipher it. Uh, meanwhile, I think it's a welcome change and we're all excited about it. Most of the schools are doing many things. So, um, and the good part, I feel the bottom line is that uh, it has brought in the good and the best of all prevalent curriculums around uh, that, that are implemented. So I think it's already got the best of it. We really need a lot of understanding and uh, more platforms to discuss each and every point of it. And one yes. thing I seriously uh, feel is that um, the instructions uh, to be phased out and to come in from the right uh, place and authority. Too much of groping in the dark and trying to understand it on our own self might lead us haywire. So that is one thing that concerns me. And of course, um, once the policy is there, I think people will think about there were concerns about children who would get transferred and uh, would have language issues. Yes, absolutely, we're looking at, I think I, I have a few cases myself where language becomes an issue. And there are not only these uh, at primary level, sir, but they also come in senior levels where children from one school uh, who's offering a third language as French or Spanish, and I don't have that language in my school. There's a, the, there's a struggle there with the child, um, you know, taking up those languages even between the schools. So, see, there are going to be challenges everywhere. And like, uh, I love those lines Rupa uh, uh, spoke that, you know, the best comes out of adversity. And uh, this is one thing that has come out uh, at the right time. And I think we should be very happy with it and uh, look at it from a perspective of an education policy and leave it at that. And, you know, not, not con confuse ourselves or complicate issues and uh, wait for the instructions. I think it will clarify more doubts. Each day is getting better. 
So um, I think that's where I would like to leave it. And thank you so much, Pranav. It was very interesting. Every time we have a discussion, I think there are loads of learning points that we take back home. And uh, it's always nice to come on EduTV. I think all of us thank agree on that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Professor Mishra, Rupa Ma'am, uh, Dr. Rajiv Chauhan, Madam uh, Alka Vasti, Geeta Ma'am, Dr. Priyanka Mehta, Trilok Singh Ji, and Mr. Jyotish Mandatta. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. 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 Thank